That's the UK's number one, give me everything tonight, here on Demon Breakfast 8.35. I've been joined in the studio by John Costa from Simpsons Eye. Hello. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? I'm very well. The last time I saw you was at the Creative Garden event, yes. I think, was it? The Phoenix, very good event that was. It was very good, loads of stuff was going on that day. Very, very busy. You were doing a live broadcast, weren't you? Over I lunchtime was. Show, yeah. So, yeah. Very good. That was great. But you're here to talk about the Community Week, so what is this all about? Uh, well, uh, as I was saying earlier on Gina's show, the idea really was to try and come up with a way of getting what Citizens Eye did in the city um, out to the county more. Uh, and we thought, well, should we have a community media day? Is that really long enough? So I thought, well, actually, maybe we should have a community media week. And we ran the last, uh, the first one last November for a whole week of activities. And the idea was to have one thing a day. I'll just emphasise that again, one <laughs> thing a day. And uh, even back then, it got out of control, where we had things every morning, afternoon and evening. Um, and so we thought maybe if we did it every six months, it would give us an opportunity to tie all of our uh, workshops and opportunities to come to a culmination every six months around activities and events and things to do and, and kind of give you a, a lot of the volunteers an opportunity to shout about yeah. why it is they do it, you know, and why they get involved. Did you know it's also National Ice Cream Week? It is National Ice Cream Week, <laughs> it is the, uh, I think it's National Family Week, it's National Volunteering Week, yes, yeah, so there's everything. always, a, there's a day for everything, you know. There it is, apparently in America there's a month of ice cream, like instead of us having a week there's a month. Yeah, but that makes logical sense, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so how can people get involved with this community week? Because there's so many events going on. Well, on the, if you look on the website, citizenseye.org, there's a, a community media week logo. And if you click on that, there's a schedule for all seven days. A lot of it is centred around uh, Phoenix Square in the cultural quarter. Every evening there's events going on between 6 and 11, so that's a, a good place to turn up. Um, we're, we're on talking to you guys, we're on BBC Radio Leicester today, we're sharing information with a lot of the other great radio stations out there. Um, we've got a lot of uh, tours planned, so we're going to have a tour of the old um, Central Lending Library between 2 and 4 tomorrow to come down and see where our new radio booth's going to be. We're, we're doing that in partnership with Demon FM, which is great. We've got a photography gallery that we're going to be setting up in there as well. Ian Davis has done a great job on that. And then we've got lots of our volunteers and you know community reporters out there anyway who act as eyes and ears for us, but also advocating for us every day. And I know um, Andy is listening today, uh, Moggy, he's, he's, al he's always listening, always <laughs> on my case, making sure I keep uh, everything access for all. And, uh, and and that's brilliant because what it means is that when they're out there, they're kind of picking up the, the news stories and what's going on and, and things that are going well and things that aren't going well. And I've always been a great advocate, and a lot of people that know me will say this over the last three and a half years we've done it. It's, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I think it's, it, it's easy to be negative. Um, but sometimes to actually engage with people and try and get them to change, um, say, decisions that you don't necessarily agree with or are not quite right through, you know, dialogue and compromise and things like that, and then we, we could solve a lot of the issues that we have if we do that. So I, I don't give people a voice. I give them the opportunity to have their voice. Ah, I see. It's a little bit different. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the news that you'll get out there now that's kind of, you know, anti newspapers and anti-mainstream media. I mean, a, a, a PhD student said to me last week, she came last October and she came back again, she said, with all the research that she's done in the UK, we're the only community um, sort of news organisation, if you like, that actually works in partnership with a local paper. You know, yeah. we have a page every week and we've got six desks in there and stuff. So I'm not anti-newspapers. I think they have their their role to play, mm. just like Facebook and Twitter does, but then again, so does community radio and, and so do websites, but you know, sometimes it's good old face-to-face, -face, and that's why we have these community news cafes, because you can't just expect people to go and look online no. um, and stuff, and you know, we've got a good relationship with the City Council's library service, so if you use your library card, there's a Citizens Eye logo on the home page there. That's really so. clever, I thought, when yeah. I heard about that earlier. I thought that was really clever, because some people obviously don't go on the internet as much, or they wouldn't really know, but if it's just in the library and they're there, they'll know about it, won't they, and get involved. That's right. I mean, I, I think what we've found, certainly since, like I said, three and a half years of doing Citizens Eye, is the value of face-to-face -face goes up the more that you do. So you can have all of these reporters spread across the city and the county, you know, and people sending you information and all this great stuff going on. But sometimes it's that simple one hour and it's only an hour conversation at Kona Blue Coffees on a Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 10.30. It's great. We all come together and talk. And sometimes that's the only time you've seen people all week. And then I've tried to replicate that, if you like, when we run um, 
media centres, like when we met at the Creative Garden, yeah. you saw the amount of volunteers that we had floating in, in and out that day, <laughs> and we just done it recently for the Green Film Festival, um, and we're going to be doing it around again for Skyride, we ran all the, the media as volunteers for Skyride last year, building up to 2012, and it's about bringing people together to turn around and say, look, you know, it's about the Olympic and the Paralympic values of sort of, you know, determination and friendship and all that. The sport's interesting. But it's all these things which all underline um, and are part of community cohesion and community engagement and volunteering in the big society, whatever it's called this week. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's about helping people where you live and caring about where you live. So. Yeah, I mean, anyone could become a journalist for you, can't they? And if they just want to, they've got a story or they want to volunteer. So how can they actually get involved, getting their stories out there? Well, a lot of people come to me and say, John, I want to be involved, but you know, I haven't been to university, I don't have a degree, I haven't got this, I haven't got that. They go right, okay, let's stop looking about all the things that you think you need. You know, are you enthusiastic? Is there something that you're passionate about that you want to report on for your community of faith or geography or demographic, whatever? Yes, right, you're in. Okay, there's these workshops that you can take part in. If you want to be a film producer, there's or you know make films, there's courses for that that we've got links with that we can help you. We just do taster sessions, you know, build a blog or you know Facebook or Twitter, whatever, and then. They turn up at uh, the Costa Coffee, at uh, the um, Kona Blue Coffee Shop, or, or Coffee Republic, on a Thursday morning, and we run these little sessions. And then it's just it's just about getting involved. You know, you can email stuff. We set up a, a photography news agency, Caps Community Action Photographers, because the guy came to me and said, "I don't want to write anything, <laughs> <laughs> but I've got a camera." So literally, we, we, a news agency was born out of that. And we've got lots of. I think we've got uh, twenty now in total. We're yeah. launching a couple more this week. One for carers it's National Carers Week coming up and also um, one for human trafficking which will be is quite powerful really mm. because uh, these are the kind of issues that are going on under our nose we kind of read about being elsewhere but they're going on under our nose and I think it's important that by approaching it in that way that uh, again case studying it and you know people that are refugee and asylum seekers and or you know they've got a disability or they're homeless or that kind of stuff you know and I think one of the things that really that really does motivate me is that we say to people, oh, you know, you can have a voice and all that sort of stuff, but people don't just want a voice because they're homeless, so we try and give them their voice, and it just happens that, you know, they've been affected by homelessness at that particular time, you know, it wasn't by choice normally, no. then they're going to move on, so it's very important that we, we give people the opportunity to get out of the volunteering thing, what they what they want, so we don't sort of do anything for anybody really, give them the opportunity to help themselves. <laughs> Are you going to be holding any more community weeks? Yes, we have them. The idea is to have them. I sounded like we had hundreds of them then, didn't I? Um, <laughs> yes, this is the ninety seven. No, this is the second one. Uh, we did one last November, this one uh, in June, and then the idea is to do one in November, and then next June. And next June is kind of preparing us ready for the Olympics and the Paralympics, where we'll be doing lots of stuff to do that. But it, it's one of those weeks where you know. It gives you an opportunity to go on lots of radio stations and meet lots of people. And um, we've got the Citizens, the Citizens Eye and Community Media Week logos in the Mercury today launching it. And then tomorrow we've got our page. But then we've got articles that are like real time written by community reporters in the paper. Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we've got our page again ah. next Thursday. So again, we're just trying to say to people, um, you know, yes, you can get better. You know, anybody can be a community reporter. Um, and I'd like to think if we did our job right and got more and more community news and all that kind of stuff, people like you know the Leicester Mercury and Radio Leicester and kind of what people would class as the mainstream media would have the opportunity to go out and actually hire more staff you know, who are <laughs> yeah. qualified to do it. And to me, that that's what it's about. It was never about replacing people. No. It was about just saying, look, there's this whole kind of raft of stories that because you're dealing at this level, you don't really know. You know, when you've got volunteers living in New Parks and Braunston and um, you know various places in the county, well. You know, a mainstream journalist must be a very, very busy person. I see him whizzing in and out of the, of the newsroom <laughs> at the Mercury. They're going off to cover things that have happened or things that people have told them. If you're down at this level and you haven't had your voice heard yet, mm. then this is a way of doing it. And I think we set up a community news agency professionally, uh, as in we treated it seriously. You know, mm -hmm. Because it was a community newsletter, it didn't need to be photocopied. You know, no. It could be a good thing. That's why I had a great relationship with Saw magazine when we did Saw Community for, uh, um, I think it was about six issues, just to, trying to raise aspirations that you can get out there and get involved um, and you know there's an opportunity to go through this process that's based on no, nothing else other than um, being enthusiastic and become uh, a community radio presenter and stuff. There's lots of, they're always looking for people to get involved and yeah, volunteer. Of course, and yeah. it's amazing. You, know, you, you come here and people just go, oh, you know, I wouldn't stand a chance of doing anything with Demon FM and all that. And you're always looking for volunteers. Yeah, I mean, 